So uh, good morning, Mr. Timo, and thank you so much, sir, for granting us uh, the opportunity to interview uh, sir here in Siem Reap province. Uh, Mr. Timo, you are the managing director of uh, Juro USA Seva, you know, a agency that helps promote and connect, uh, you know, businesses, especially in tourism together. Uh, around the world, sir. Correct. And you also have been working in this sector for 30 years, as I was informed, Mr. Timo. So, uh, sir, now you stationed in Siem Reap, you know, one of the cultural province of Cambodia. And um, it is also a, a big topic, you know, to, to, to bring in um, foreign tourists uh, to, to visit what Siem Reap has to offer, sir. So, as, you know, of your experience working here and also around the world, can you just tell us a bit, you know, what Siem Reap has to offer to the foreign tourists, especially in Europe or, you know, Western countries, sir, like the USA, let's say? Yes. I mean, Siem Reap, of course, everybody's talking about Angkor Wat. That's one of the main. But what is important in Siem Reap, of course, is the people, Cambodian people and understanding their tradition, understand their lifestyle. Many foreigners, they come here because they want to, they are not just coming for a big city somewhere else, but they want to feel what are people doing, what are people, mm -hmm. what their experience is. They want to connect to the people, also the culture, but we have so much to offer in Siem Reap. We have wonderful food, people, activities, a lot of activities, and of course, Angkor Wat, but we should not only focus on Angkor Wat, because we want to have people coming here multiple times. And if they just come mm -hmm. here for Angkor Wat, it might be just once, but we want to get stay longer with different activities. But, but why you mentioned that, you know, when people come to Angkor Wat, they only come again because there's a saying in Khmer, you know, but maybe at least in Khmer, they said, once you come to Angkor Wat, you will need to come again, you know. And so, so why, why is that the case? Unfortunately, sir? many Westerners, they have so-called bucket list. Mm -hmm. So when they have done Angkor Wat, they click, I have done it. Now I need to go to Machu Picchu, or I want to see the luxury. So it's not, it's one of those important elements to include that you want to do it once in your lifetime. But if that's the only thing, they are not coming back, unfortunately. They have to have other activities. They're not going to come back to temples only. They, you know, but Siem Reap has so much more to offer, and Cambodia has so much more to offer. As I mentioned earlier, we have beautiful beaches. People don't even know that. But it's not all about Siem Reap, but mm -hmm. Cambodia as a destination. We have beautiful capital, we have rivers, we have mountains, Kulen Mountains, we have so much more to offer. And I think that's important to bring that information to the consumers. Yes, sir. So beside temple, what do you think Siem Reap has, sir? For example, maybe you said you mentioned the people, but also maybe the natural scenery, something like that? Sir? Definitely. I mean, of course, Kulen Mountain, mm -hmm. you have river, you have uh, you have lakes nearby, you have a lot of things, villages to visit, rice okay. fields, you know, that's all interesting for people. They love to do that. You, but then you have even standard things, aquariums, mm -hmm. two butterfly gardens, and, uh, you know, there's so many things, and, you know, far circles, you know, many other things you can do, artwork, food tours, you can do a lot of things here. Yes, sir. And as your marketing strategy, sir, normally how, how should, you know, all of us promote Simbrium? to the world because uh, now there's like a small movement, not, not a small one, but a significant one also. They say that, you know, each person is an agent of tourism, you know, him or herself to mm -hmm. promote, you know, uh, Siem Reap or maybe other provinces to the world. So normally from your perspective, sir, I mean, how should the promotion of Siem Reap be done to the world, especially after the COVID-19, sir? I mean, there's very important element what is safety. Because when I go to trade show, for example, in January I went to, to Helsinki, one of the biggest Nordic trade show, uh, because I go to different workshops and trade shows to promote Cambodia as a destination. The first question is always, is it safe? They don't know that. And unfortunately, like in the secondary market for Cambodia, people only know, they don't hear news about Cambodia. They only remember 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. So the connections are too close because Cambodia is not in news, they, they don't know what's going on, they don't understand it's safe. Mm -hmm. And that's biggest issue is to make sure that we promote Cambodia as a safe destination. So, so how, how would you do that, sir, in order to bring them, you know, the safety in their mindset? So you just need to mention that, it's safe. Mm -hmm. You saw videos of kids and families enjoying going to Wake Park or going to uh, 
elephant sanctuary in Kulin Mountain mm -hmm. or doing, you know, activities with the family, for example. But that's, that's what I use because I have a nine-year-old daughter and I say, I'm always safe with my daughter in Pompeii mm -hmm. or wherever. I, I never feel unsafe. And that's, we need to address that. And actually what I also realized that when we promote CM Rip, it's serious, it's temples, it's serious. What about the fun? We need to make the message more fun. Enjoy, come to enjoy. Have temples, but enjoy. Do the zip line, do hot balloons, but do something also making it fun. People travel to make fun, you know, have fun. You know, so I think that has to be element. Safety, but also making it fun. That's what I don't see. And I think that's what we could add in our mm. message for the providers. So normally temples is the main thing in order to attract, you know, tourists because, you know, it is quite, you know, unique to Cambodia, but mm. at the same time, you also need to have like, you know, butterfly. Gardens, butterfly. Garden, you know, the, the, the botanical mm. garden where people can walk around for hours before, you know, not getting bored. In the vague park yeah. is interesting. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, that's what, uh, as I mentioned, Far Circus is wonderful addition for our services. Food tours with Vespas. You know, you can do a lot of, biking is really, I think biking is really important because uh, Cambodia is a flat country, mostly here. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to do biking. And biking is really very sustainable. And what I also want to address, for example, in this hotel as well, or other hotels, I like to work with the local companies because it's sustainable. Mm -hmm. Khmer owned businesses are sustainable for the future. Yes, sir. We are talking about plastic, but it's a very important element. But there's also the, the more different sustainability, making sure that the money comes and it makes this country richer and the money stays here. Well, you mentioned human sustainability. That's yeah. human is very yeah. important. I always start with a human sustainability because if you don't have sus human sustainability, mm -hmm. the others don't follow. Mm -hmm. People don't think about the plastic, but if they think about themselves that they're doing well, the plastic will come automatically as well. I believe that it's important non-plastic, like this hotel is non-plastic, but this human sustainability, what is many times not remembered. Yes, sir. But you mentioned that there are many, to, there are many so there are so many things to do in Siem Reap. But is it really hard to push the message out and you know let people outside absorb the message and they come? I mean, is the process normally hard from from your perspective, sir? I don't think it's hard, but it's not done. That's not the issue. Done. It's not okay. done. People only for now. They, I see more and more uh, marketing mm -hmm. for adding the fun biking, jeep tours, food tours. This, it's coming more and more. People are realizing mm -hmm. that's so most. It's the most important that they stay here more than three nights. They stay five nights, mm -hmm. enjoying and come back. So it's it's changing. I can see it changing, but it's not there. The message is not there totally yet. I see, sir. At the same time, you know, there's a a very long standing belief that the rainy season is the low season. And for me as a Cambodian, I feel a bit, you know, confused also because the rainy season is actually a lot better. I mean, despite the mud and, and you know, the soaky wet weather, mm -hmm. but I think it is more green. Uh, you know, the weather is more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, the temples look very good in trees. Mm -hmm. So. Why, why green season or maybe, you know, the rainy season used to be the low season for, for you know, Western tourists? And how can we change that perception so that, that the green season, no, the rainy season is actually a green season and the season where people should come, not the other way around? Well, that's what the, yeah. it's just a change of marketing. It used to be called, as you mentioned, the rain season. Mm -hmm. And many Westerners, when they hear the season is rain season, they're afraid to come because they think it's nonstop rain as a monsoons. And it's not correct. As you mentioned, green season is actually my favorite season mm -hmm. because there's not too many people. The prices are low as well. But, the, you know, it's, it's a wrong concept that had to be changed. And that's why mm -hmm. we're not calling it anymore rain season. We call it green season to make understand it's not rainy season, but they have nonstop rain. So, so when you said rain season, before Westerners think that it rains all day, that's, that's what you mean? Sir. That's what I mean. It's a, it's a wrong concept and we have to change that in marketing. So yeah. in Cambodia, it does not rain all day long. It no, is more like it's actually day. wonderful. At five o'clock, mm. they leave it rain for one hour and that's, and it's, as you mentioned, mm. everything's green, more beautiful. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a wrong concept what we have to change. So how, how could we change that, sir? We need to tell them that. This is a green season. Mm -hmm. It's not rain season. It's a, I, that's what I tell the client. It's raining maybe one hour, but it's not non-stop rain. We have to educate them. 
it's important to educate them correctly. And that's, that's a key. And that's already the process is not calling a rain season, but calling green season is the first step. Second step is telling them what the rain season means. It's beautiful, it's more greenery, and all these wonderful things for the green season. We have to emphasize that and tell them about it. That's us, marketing, we have to educate them as well. Yes, sir. But in other, you know, neighboring tropical countries in Southeast Asia, for example, Thailand or mm. maybe Laos or Indonesia, mm. I think they have a very big chunk of their, you know, tropical forest still intact. So do you think that they also have the same issue, you know, the yearly phenomenon that, okay, the rainy season is the low season? Do, do, do they have that phenomenon like Cambodia, sir? I mean, of course, I don't know Thailand so well, but yeah. if I understood correctly, they don't call it rain season. They don't, they don't... They don't create that concept, no. No, not so much difference. And here it's very strong with the rates as well, mm. lower rates. And I think it's, a, it's just, we need to change that for, because I don't hear neighbors talking about so much about the rain season. Of mm. course, India may be different, but you know, our neighboring countries, they don't have, they have similar season than we do. So we need to just learn from them as well, how they're doing it, to change it. Yes, sir. And also you mentioned something like the hot air balloon, mm -hmm. which is quite new to Cambodia, especially in Siem Reap. And you also mentioned about, you know, for example, like the camping in the temple, in the temple at night, the jungle. Yeah. So, know. so those, uh, to me, I think those are untouched activity mm -hmm. within the tourism market. Mm -hmm. So, are there many untouched activities in Siem Reap that you know people should pay more attention toward it? I mean, yes, as I mentioned, yes, these sir. temple safaris, but. Uh, this company is doing as well, so they do stay one or two nights in the jungles and mm -hmm. torch, call the torches to, to visit some temples nearby. It's a wonderful addition for, for the services. Uh, but I think there's so much, for, as I mentioned, all these butterfly gardens and all that, so we have to just educate people more. And there's, mm -hmm. I think they're all new for the Westerners because they don't know. They only know Angkor Wat. So if we are telling them food tours or temple safaris, or anything, that's new. Or they don't even know that there's uh, zip lines in Angkor or, mm. you know, hot balloons. They don't know. It's all about educating them, yeah. you know? Yes, sir. But at the same time, you know, because, for example, Siem Reap, to, to Cambodia, Siem Reap is a very cultural city, province, a very wow. traditional city and province. Um, but at the same time, you know, because um, Westerners, they also want to see something fun, like you said, you know? They also want to see something more than just tradition, more than just culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they come to see culture alone, they might stay for, like you said, two or three days. But if we can introduce them, you know, some modernized or, you know, globalized or something that, that, that can be more than just tradition, they can be longer, they can stay longer. That's correct. For example, the contemporary art, mm -hmm. or maybe, like you said, you know, the, the Uncle Fairy Seville or something. Uncle, you yeah. mean Uncle I? Yeah, 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 something like that, and also Aquarium. Mm -hmm. So, from a marketing perspective, how do you balance between tradition and modernization, you know? Not, not to, you know, not, not to hurt the tradition, but at the same time, you know, also to embrace uh, modernization in order to bring more tourists. Of course. Uh, I mean, as you mentioned, it's still important to do traditions because mm -hmm. why they're coming to Cambodia is because of our culture mm -hmm. and our traditions. That's the main thing what they... Because otherwise, if we don't have that, why would they come so far away? So it's mm -hmm. one main reason. But then as making it longer stay, we can add these simple, modern activities, theme parks, mm -hmm. uh, activities, you know, zoo, you know, the, they fill the schedule. And also because many times they have families. So the young kids, they're not really interested to go to temples. They like to go to regular zoo or as butterfly gardens. So mm -hmm. it's important to balance that, to have them, first of all, stay longer, but also to come back to have. But that has to be also something what we develop all the time news. So they come back for other activities. So we have to grow and develop new ideas all the time. And, uh, you know, I think I have heard about theme parks, building a theme mm -hmm. park here as well. What yes, would be, it's not traditional, and there's many people who are against that very likely because it would be breaking the tradition. Mm. But on the other hand, let's keep variety. If we want to get tourists, we have to be modern as well and to have that combined like you mentioned. But at the same time, tra tradition like this, for example, still need to be retained. It's the most important actually. Mm. It is the most important. Without that, we are becoming a Disneyland mm -hmm. and we need the tradition 
but we need also other activities, definitely. Yes, sir. Um, because you work a lot with travelers from the US, travelers from Europe, um, I have that question in mind. Uh, do, do, the, 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 do the different nationality want to see different things in Cambodia? I mean, for example, uh, the habit of American or maybe the habit of Italian or maybe French or maybe, you know, the Scandinavian country. When they come to Cambodia, do they have like, you know, specific habit? For example, I, I heard some people, they say, you know, oh, French people, they come here, they want to, st they want to study about temples. They are more focused on archaeology, mm -hmm. or maybe you know, American. They come here. They want to do a lot of you know, uh, let's say energy, you know, intensive uh, activity like cycling or or you know, climbing the mountain or something like that. So, do you see that you know, the distinct habit between nationality, from American to to you know, other nations in Europe, from your experience that's important actually in marketing you have to mm -hmm. you have to profile yourself for different markets and mm -hmm. you're really correct Americans or Australians so you know they are more for the activities and experiences yeah, yeah. and then uh, French are very much more emphasizing on in intellectual side of the travel mm -hmm. so it's more uh, they're more studying it's, it's just a different so we have to really market them differently you can't do it the same way at all or Nordics uh, Nordic countries, for example, they love to be connected to the beach mm. in their holidays. Or German, Nordic European, Northern European, they, the beach, because of weather conditions. So they want to come to the beach in order to, to stay under sand bath, that's, that's what you mean, okay? That's correct. It's, mm -hmm. it's important for the regular tourists as well. So mm -hmm. they're all different. I don't think French necessarily are coming here for the, to the beach, but mm -hmm. you know, Northern European, you know, they, they have very hard winters, so they like to stay in the beach and get some tan. Mm -hmm. uh, but also connecting to the cultural and, you know, and also very important, different cultures have different habits, what kind of hotels they like. Do they want to have international hotels? Branding. Mm -hmm. Americans are maybe looking for more Marriott or their standardized hotels. Oh, but really? Nordic countries, oh. they like boutique hotels. And mm -hmm. French also, they like boutique. So they have also different in the style, what kind of accommodation they want. So we have to take that in consideration when we market for different countries. But uh, as I mentioned earlier also, we, Cambodia and Siem Reap focus a lot of uh, old markets, French, UK, Germany, mm -hmm. and we're all going after the same markets. Why not to have secondary markets? Of course, Poland is coming strongly. Nordic countries, they are the fifth largest feeder, for example, to the US. They travel mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, they have five weeks paid holidays. So I think we also need to change our marketing that we don't only market for certain markets. We can split that. Some hotels maybe go to the other markets, not all the same French market or German mm. market or US. Australia, as I mentioned, is not, I think there's a lot of potential in Australia, but hasn't been used. So we need to also look marketing from different countries, but we have to know the profile and understand how to talk to this market. It's very important. Of course, it's a, and a, it's a, it's important element, yes. Yes, sir. So, one of the problem is that we try to connect to the old market. All and, of them. And, and we, we, we don't really focus on the new market that much. Yeah. I think so. But, but just a, uh, maybe just a quick question for our audiences. Uh, what, what do you mean by old market and new market? So, new market is the country that that's do not that, really know Cambodia that that's much? That's correct. That's, that's what correct. You mean? That's what I mean. Old market is because they have knowledge. French, of course, because, mm. you know, common history as well, so mm -hmm. there's a lot of knowledge about Cambodia mm -hmm. in general, but Nordic market, they don't know about So, Cambodia. So, for example, Nordic countries, sir, like, is it like, okay, they wake up today, they find Cambodia on the map, and then they say, oh, let's go to Cambodia next year. It, is that the case, or we need to also offer our information to them first in order for them to know more about us? Sir? I mean, we need to offer them, because yeah. there's 198 countries in the world. So why would they come to Cambodia out of the map? Of course, there's have certain elements you have to look when you develop the marketing. For example, just about the Nordic market, they have non-stop flights to Bangkok, Singapore. So it would be easy connection because they have been going for a long time already, Vietnam and Bangkok and Thailand. So it would be, they can be a little bit tired of that. So it would be mm. easy for those secondary markets to look for next door, Laos or Cambodia. So we need to also study the past, what is the past. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it's, it's, it's not only we need to market, but we have to also study what they have options. Flights are important. Our problem in Siem Reap is the new airport because it's not connected enough. So we're getting more and more. We 
and I haven't seen the airport promoting itself. Maybe they are promoting themselves as a destination because there is a trade shows for airports to promote their services. It's not they're not coming automatically. You have to sell your airport as well. So I hope they will sell that you know more aggressively in the future yes, sir. because that's an important element to feed and bring the tourists to our city. Yes, sir. I used to hear from you know some foreigners. They mentioned that oh. When they come to Cambodia, they actually find more things than they expected. That's right. So, for example, the beaches that you mentioned, people, some people do not know that Cambodians have good beaches to start with. Gorgeous beaches, yes, not only good. Yeah, like Koh Rong or maybe the yeah. island, the yeah. island, uh, the island uh, archipelago, something yeah. like that. And also, near Siem Reap is the Battambong city, mm-hmm. where they have, you know, I, I think the vibe over there is even more traditional than Siem Reap. Mm-hmm. So people can, especially, especially foreigners, they can go there also. Mm-hmm. So what you mean is that not many foreigners know about Cambodia, besides mm-hmm. Uncle. No, they don't. They don't. Okay. They, it's really, that's what we need to, I mean, of course, it has to be done by companies, mm-hmm. DMCs, but also government could be helpful to social mm-hmm. media, videos, News, even news about Cambodia, getting more news and positive news, and I emphasize again the safety, getting news by government showing that how safe it is, because this country is very safe. You know, the, you can, you know, I don't feel unsafe, in, even in Phnom Penh, I don't. That's the element what I think we need to address, you know, directly. It's just not, not avoiding it, but actually mentioning it about directly as well. Yes, sir. And also the last question, because um, I, I, I understand that business to business Um, interaction promotion is also very important because you know they bring in you know the, the tourists in bulk. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know in in Siem Reap, there are so many small and medium enterprises mm-hmm. and also you know individual influencers who try to promote Siem Reap in their own spot in their own sphere. Mm-hmm. And also the way they try to promote is for now primarily through Facebook and also sometimes Instagram or maybe TikTok. Mm-hmm. Um, But you know the thing is that when we try to promote, even though in English, onto Facebook, of course not many foreign tourists, especially Westerners, will use Facebook, especially the younger generation. That's correct. And also IG, Instagram is also a bit of a obstacle sometimes. So, what what kind of social media and and you know like how much can we use it or on what level? Okay, okay. So the thing is that how can we connect? As you know, individual Cambodian, not not big companies, you know, to to expand the message to those uh, Western countries. So through social media, sir. So. I mean, as you mentioned, uh, the the Facebook is still very well used, but mm-hmm. it's more age bracket is from forty yeah. or fifty and older. So the youngsters, it's more TikTok. Mm. So that's very. Of course, it has a problems in government. They try to control it, but there's a lot of young people who use TikTok. And these new platforms coming along all the time, but for younger crowds, I would recommend TikTok in Europe. Mm. Facebook is more, you know, 40 and 50 years old. Like uh, senior people also. Senior people yeah. because they were younger than when Facebook was established. Mm. So they follow the Facebook, but young crowds, they don't use Facebook at all in Europe or Western countries. They use mm-hmm. TikTok really strongly. But there's also new platforms coming all the time. So mm-hmm. we need to also update what They a snap, uh, you know, what is a snapper or nap, snap? Uh, Snapchat. Snapchat like, is yeah. very important as well coming yeah. up. And uh, so, you know, there's many different ways, but uh, I think uh, Facebook is not bad, but you need to mm-hmm. know your profile of target market, what you want to reach. Mm-hmm. So if you want to reach older generations, Facebook still works, but not for youngsters. I see. So. There are so many social medias that we need to target mm-hmm. at a different age, different time, and also different, different interest market. also. That's correct. Different interest yes, as well. So it's, it's a, I mean, I wouldn't say no for Facebook, but I would mm-hmm. understand what is your profile. And I think the, the important element is, again, analyzing. Because we need to analyze what is your target, what is your target market, what, what are you targeting, and then that gives you the answer what media to use or what platform to use. Mm-hmm. And also like a closing question, sir. Uh, starting from COVID-19, you know, where Siem Reap was so, let's say, quite devastating until uh, this, you know, today is about four years now. So do you see a good gradual development and also, you know, the number of tourists coming from mm-hmm. your perspective? No, I don't. Okay. I'm, you know, I don't, I, I 
think we could do better. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, as you know, Vietnam and Thailand has done better in mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. Our numbers are going in the right direction. They're going higher, but not fast enough, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I think we could do better. And I think we need to really... And now I've heard there's a lot of government and private entities are try to work harder together to make it happen. Mm -hmm. But there's not enough information, positive information uh, about Cambodia as a destination. So I think we could do much better.